Hello, everyone. We're from the University of Windsor, and today we'll be dissecting brain tumor initiating cell properties in diffuse astrocytomas. Sorry. Okay, so let's begin with defining and analyzing the issue at hand. Diffuse astrocytomas originate from a mutation in star shaped glial cells in the brain. And oddly enough, the World Health Organization actually classifies diffuse astrocytomas as a low grade tumor. And low grade tumors are usually treated with surgical excision and supplemented with chemotherapy. So after the tumor is resected, the problem appears to be solved. This is a low grade tumor, so we should expect favorable outcomes. However, due to the infiltrative nature of this particular tumor, the patient relapses, um, indicating that there are a population of cells present that are driving tumor recurrence, even with the expertise and the advancements in surgery. Okay, based on the first image, you can see that the primary tumor consists of various cells consisting of red, green, and purple cells. Those cells are going to be subjected to various interventions, yet even with surgery and the advancements in surgery and chemotherapy, we still find some cells remaining, as seen in the second image. Now, those cells are going to form therapy-resistant populations that, that will then lead to future tumor recurrence. So what if we could target these therapy-resistant populations that initiate tumor relapse? So from prior research, we know that brain tumor initiating cells, or BTICs for short, are capable of tumor regeneration, even post-therapy. Now these BTICs can be characterized and grouped by different cell surface markers. For instance, CD133, CD44, and CD15, two proteins and a carbohydrate respectively. From past research, we know that when these cell surface markers are present in cells, they show aspects like tumorigenic potential and therapy resistance. Furthermore, from other past literature, we also see that when you extract the BTICs from high-grade gliomas and from low-grade gliomas, the BTIC populations both show identical stem cell-like characteristics. So this arises different questions and more questions. Can we identify the specific BTICs that are driving this tumor relapse? And if we identify them, can we seek therapeutic targets on their specific characteristics? And these questions lead us to our hypothesis, which is that investigation into these specific BTICs with unique, with unique molecular characteristics presents a novel approach in searching for therapeutic targets, both in advanced glioma and for preventing the, the recurrence of diffuse astrocytomas. This brings us to our approach. Our approach consists of three aims. The first aim is comparing the primary and the recurrent glioma, and then we're going to subject that to various analytical tests. Our second aim is selecting for resistant populations in the primal glioma, and then we're going to compare those back to the recurrent glioma. And then our last aim is to determine the tumorigenic and therapy-resistant populations using mouse models. Okay, so to break it down for you, our first aim consists of our already ongoing, already established collaboration with Henry Ford Hospital across the border. Due to this collaboration, we're in a unique position to have access of primary tumor samples that are pair matched with their recurrent tumor spheres as well. Now remember, there are certain cells that are left over, to say, that are therapy resistant and that grow back the tumor. For instance, the green cells, as were alluded to previously. So if we take the, the primary tumors and the recurrent tumors and sort them via fluorescent activated cell sorting, or FACS for short, we can then look at the genomics and proteomics to identify similarities. And these similarities will allow us to target the brain tumor initiating cells that are present and redriving the tumor. And this kind of takes us to aim two, where our goal is to mimic the recurrent tumor by selecting for those cells that are therapy re resistant from the primary heterogeneous tumor. So the, so the primary tumor sphere culture would be given the same chemotherapy treatment that the patient received in clinic. This would provide us with a population of those resistant cells that are driving the tumor recurrence. And once we have these populations, we can characterize, qu uh, quantify, and identify these cells and compare them back with the patient's recurrent tumor sample. 
This brings us to our last aim, which is to determine the profile of tumorigenic and therapy-resistant populations using mouse models. As you can see, the primary tumor spheres consist of an assortment of cells. We're going to sort those cells out, get individual cells, inject those into mice, and now those mice will be supplemented with patient-matched chemotherapy. And this is important because it's helping identify which of these sorted populations are actually leading to future tumor recurrence. Okay. And we also hope that our study will reach the clinical setting one day. For instance, after the tumor is resected, we can take the cells and using the archived data from AIMS 1 and 2, we can then follow the steps of AIM 3, which would be taking the tumor, sorting the cells, implanting them into mice, and using patient chemotherapy. With this, we can pinpoint the BTICs that are redriving the population. And by pinpointing them, we can then look at the genomics and proteomics, which in turn leads us to molecular targets. That will result in novel drugs and ultimately leading to individualized therapies for patients. Now, a big overview of our project will also be the, the uh, establishment and the evolving brain tumor initiating cell banking system, in which we would use all the cells that we sorted in our first aim and other researchers, labs, and groups will be able to uh, withdraw BTICS populations from our lab for the small cost of a collaboration and further research into this confusing disease. And with that, we would like to thank you for listening to our presentation. Thank you to the judges and the Del Maestro family for making this competition possible. And most of all, thank you to the Tate Boomer Memorial Brain Tumor Foundation and the Brain Tumor Foundation of Canada for giving students like us the opportunity to have a voice and be heard. Great work, guys, and girl, sorry, <laughs> uh, girls and guy. Um, want to ask you a question, so, so really interesting around taking the platform approach to, to build out the platform given where we're at and the, the logic of that. One of the things I wanted to ask is what, how do you take that to actually do the therapeutic side, right? Would you, where, Where's, where's the starting point once you have some of that molecular definition? Is it going back to the, to the, the BTICs or is it, what, from your perspective, when you think about what you would do next, what would be that next step? So once we identify the population, if I'm understanding your correct, uh, question correctly, um, we would like to then use the molecular um, and sorry, the genomic and proteomic analysis that we use. What do you do after that? I guess is where I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that you're going to get to that point. Yeah. What do you think you do at, once you have 3,000 targets across 12 different proteins for 12 different cell types? Yeah. What do you think the next, next best step is? So we would, we would like to believe that those brain tumor initiating cells would have different properties than normal cells things like mutations in genes and stuff like that. And so um, we can then use things like knocking down certain genes or overexpressing certain genes to try making them um, appear as normal cells, stuff like that, or using even chemotherapies that target those specific differences that BTICs have and that normal cells that aren't driving tumor relapse or normal cells that aren't proliferating um, don't have. Um, I noticed that um, you're going to collaborate with um, Henry Ford. That's great. Uh, brain tumors know no borders, as, uh, as we like to say. Um, however, do you anticipate that you will allow other, like the neurosurgeons in Ontario, will they be allowed in on your action um, by donating uh, specimens to your project? Um, yeah, it's just that we already have an ongoing collaboration with Henry Ford, like for instance in our lab, in Dr. Lisa Porter's lab. Um, I used uh, about nine different samples from Henry Ford, so if there are other surgeons that are willing to donate, we're more than happy to accept. Yes, and we're happy to donate. <laughs> Call us anytime. <laughs> then of course we'll, we'll take them. Thank you. Thank you very much. I enjoyed your presentation. Thank you. Um, what proportion of a tumor do you think is actually composed of BTIC type cells? We would assume that it would be a small portion of the tumor and that the, the BTIC populations are regrowing the bulk of the rest of the tumor, whereas they would be, I guess, like the core of the heart of the tumor. 
So it would probably be a small population, but this is definitely something that we can investigate further into. And how difficult is it to maintain that particular cell type in culture? Um, we would have to actually do this ourselves. I'm sure it's been done in research before, but um, from past literature that I've read myself is that the, st the cell characteristics, like the cell surface markers I mentioned previously, uh, usually are very, very similar to what was extracted initially. Thank you to team two.